Hi guys, I'm Kate from My Celebrity News and here is my Oscar commentary and predictions. In case you don't know, the Oscars are happening this incoming Sunday, 10th of March, as usually in the Kodak Theatre in Los Angeles. And you do have to stay the night if you are in London like I am. I'm sure Margot Robbie was quite disappointed that she wasn't nominated in the Best Actress category. And there's obviously the absence of Greta Gerwig in the uh, Director category. Leonardo DiCaprio, who wasn't nominated at all, as you probably know if you follow the world of movies Leonardo DiCaprio waited very many years to be nominated and to win an Oscar up to the point where there was calls for him to just get an Oscar in any for any movie because people were saying well he's made so many bigger movies and arguably he should have already won similarly to the voices that were raised for Beyonce that how has she not won the best Grammy best album Grammy if she's so great and so he finally won the Oscar I think it was a couple of years back for this film where he was in the wilderness and he had to struggle so much and overcome this wilderness and cold and so forth and he finally won the oscar so people breathed a sigh of relief that he was finally uh, recognized but he did not get nominated for um killers of the flower moon this year so let's run through the categories i'm going to start with uh, best actor so best actor um it's quite a competitive uh, category this year so we've got Bradley Cooper for Maestro and we do have Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer we do have some fairly new names Paul Giannetti for The Holdovers Jeffrey Wright for American F uh, Fiction there could be a surprise in this category we never know but my prediction is that Bradley Cooper will win for Maestro disclaimer if you haven't seen Maestro do watch the film but find like a, a day where you can zone out draw the blinds in your bedroom completely zone out from the outside Outside world and get that immersive experience because Maestro is set in the 60s and there was a lot of energy put into recreating that 60s feel up to the point where Bradley Cooper who's playing the main character the the maestro the composer from the 60s when he was recreating an interview moment when you put the original interview against what was actually recreated by Bradley Cooper you'd see that it's strikingly similar to the point where you'd be looking at it and you're like wow this is a truly masterful performance because it feels like you you're, you're looking at the at the actual person and it's all set in the 60s which is quite a um, sort of atmospheric era and it, it, a lot of work has been put into it but three hours with your curtains drawn I have a two-year-old he didn't survive not even 20 minutes now Killian Murphy obviously should win for Oppenheimer there's these two are my predictions who I think will win is Killian Murphy because he's pumped up a lot and he's being a for forerunner for this category but who I think should win is Bradley Cooper now best supporting actor very exciting category category this year a very competitive category this year so we've got four nominees who already have been nominated before so we've got Robert De Niro for Killers of the Flower Moon we've got Robert Downey Jr for Oppenheimer there is Ryan Gosling for Barbie and there is Mark Ruffalo for Paul things all four of them have not been nominated before who I think will win is Robert Downey Jr for Oppenheimer Oppenheimer tends to center around Killian Murphy and everyone, everyone is just talking about Killian Murphy but in fact Robert Downey Jr gave a stunning performance I'd be surprised to see Ryan Gosling win not for his performance he is nominated for I'm Just Ken which he will be performing so he might win in the best original song category but I'd be surprised if he won in the best su uh, supporting actor it could be Robert De Niro but I'm not gonna lie I am exciting about the um the company that we're going to see at the Oscars so whoever it is that's going to win I'm so happy to see all of these people sitting at the Oscars together best actress is a slightly surprising also quite controversial here we've got no Barbie as I mentioned before so no Margot Robbie that must have been a bit of a like snub so best actress category quite particular this year Emma Stone is, is nominated for poor things she's won previously for La La Land and she might be winning again it's quite a powerful performance from her there although I found it rather scary and she really brought her intensity to a next level she kind of reminded me of Birdman in that film it was of her performance in Birdman she had these huge eyes and they were so expressive like Emma Stone has huge eyes they just pierce through your soul and that's literally it and it's quite sci I, I felt it was quite sci-fi that film who could win paradoxically is Lily Gladstone for Killers of the Flower Moon Killers of the Flower Moon disclaimer a very long movie critically acclaimed however criticized for the running time of not not a joke three hours 26 minutes Lily Gladstone and the whole movie is about the history of the American recaps on the story of the Native Americans and the crimes that were committed against them so it's a very deep topic and Lily Gladstone is is, is Native American is a Native American actress which paradox 
paradoxically, I think might have been a contributing factor to why Leonardo DiCaprio came on to the movie as well. Because as you know, Leonardo DiCaprio is kind of past commercial success. He's had it all. So he's now very much concentrated on environmentalism and he is using his star power to shed light on environmental issues and on communities and so forth. And if the Academy feels like this is a topic that should be recognized this year, you know, the story of the Native Americans and this that, that this being an exception to what they normally see and a, a Native American actress being nominated, nominated for the first time, they might give her the Oscar for a lot of different other reasons. Best Supporting Actress, we've got the opposite of the Best Supporting Actor situation. So we only have one nominee who's been nominated before. This is Jodie Foster. It's actually a winner before, I believe, Jodie Foster. But in any case, we've got Emily Blunt for Oppenheimer and we do have Danielle Brooks, the only member of the Color Purple film who has been recognized. The Color Purple, arguably a huge film this year. It's quite surprising to see that it was only nominated. It, the only recognition it got was the Best Supporting Act Actress. America Ferreira is nominated for Barbie. She had that huge speech in Barbie movie at the end where, you know, she touches upon feminism and touches upon a lot of things, women's role in society. So it, if the spotlight is on the, you know, on, on women, then it could, it could be, she could be the winner. Cinematography, it has to be Maestro. I will be so shocked if it's not going to be Maestro. With all due respect to Oppenheimer, recreating the 60s is <laughs> an impossible task. So just the fact that they've taken it on and and created three hours of the 60s for us is, is, is enough for me. Costume design, Napoleon popped up. I don't know if anyone realized because there's so little buzz surrounding the Napoleon movie but sometime uh, sometimes uh, sometime earlier I think it was two years ago actually two years ago the buzz of the Ridley Scott Napoleon movie came up and everyone was talking about it Ridley Scott making a huge reinvention of the Napoleon film Joaquin Phoenix major actor is going to be playing Napoleon I remember some of my friends were extras and going on set and in order to be part of the Napoleon guards they had to be trained and it was a massive enterprise two years later I saw an outfit on the bus and I was like oh, Napoleon's out and I felt it didn't have a lot of traction yeah so I felt like Napoleon didn't really get the traction that it probably deserved it just kind of came and went so yeah costume design I think is going to go to Napoleon best director this year again no Greta Gerwig I felt that she was a, a, an incredible female director so there's only four uh, there's only one lady and there's four other men so her slot as they would tell you was taken by, by Justine Triet for Anatomy of the Fall also a great film commercially not nearly as successful as Barbie arguably We've got Martin Scorsese and we've got Oppenheimer. Best director, I think, is going to go to Christopher Nolan, which I would love to see at the Academy Awards. Or Martin Scorsese. However, Martin is really going overboard with the length of his films. Martin Scorsese, don't make any more over three hour films. We love it. We love your work. Just It's just long. <laughs> The last category I'm going to discuss is Best Picture. There's a whole, all of the lineup of the biggest films in the Best Picture category. We've got Barbie Maestro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, The Zone of Interest, Killers of the Flower, Moon, American Fiction, The Holdovers. Honestly, anything and everything goes in this category. And again, I will want to say that it depends on what Hollywood is looking at this year. I remember years where La La Land would win Best Picture because the Hollywood would be kind of looking at itself in the mirror and thinking like, let's, let's just you know ravel in our own <laughs> entertaining ability and then some other years it would be the spotlight would be on some completely different issue so it really depends if they think that the Manhattan project and the discovery of the nuclear power is more important and how that was handled then they might give it to uh, Oppenheimer so it just depends where the academy is going to lean towards this year if, if it's if it's um, uh, racial issues and historical issues it could be Maestro if or it could be Killers of the Flower Moon it remains to be seen tune in on Sunday night if you're outside of United States and if you're in the United States uh, go to Los Angeles and watch it for yourself um, this Sunday 10th of March in the Kodak Theatre in Los Angeles let's wrap up the awards season with a big bang I'm sure we're going to have lots of stories to output for you. The ICN production team will stay overnight to bring you the latest from the Oscars night and let us know in the comment section below who are your predicted winners and who are you most excited to see this year at the Oscars.